uh, Luke 18, verse 1, it says, uh, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. And I, I actually just like, so this parable, it, it, I mean, hmm. Luke is telling us, the reason Jesus told us this parable, right, is so that we wouldn't lose heart, so that we would just like, because he knows yeah. that we're going to pray and we're going to lose heart. It's going to, it's a natural tendency that when I am relentless in a prayer intention, that's not being fulfilled, mm-hmm. there's a temptation in me to lose heart yeah. and, um, or other translations say to not grow weary. Mm-hmm. And I think that the, um, wh- the confidence the Lord's asking us to have in our prayer is that we wouldn't lose heart and that we wouldn't grow weary. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the key to relentless prayer is that it's, I may not understand the mysteries of God. I may not know the understand the timing of God, but the Lord doesn't want us to grow weary. He doesn't want us to 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 lose heart. And then he says, then Jesus told his disciples um, this parable. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. So there's this, Jesus is giving this parable of this persistent widow to say, hey, listen, like, um, you're not going to lose, like, there's, God's heart is going to hear your cry and your persistence is effective. Like don't, right. don't lose that. God himself is saying your persistence is bearing some kind of fruit, right? Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't, honestly, that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make, a, it, it's slightly a mystery as to why I have to be persistent with God. Why can't I just say, God, here's a prayer. It's one and done. And he mm-hmm. keeps it in the deposit of his grace to say, yep, I've locked that in. I'm going to give it to you. But here he's saying, no, the way not to lose heart, the way not to grow weary is that your persistence is actually important and it yeah. does change something. And yeah. I, uh, that, that kind of boggles my mind that the persistence makes it an impact, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you think about just the persistence in our own humanity. Like if someone calls you mm-hmm. um, and you don't answer the call, they leave a voicemail. And then the next day they call you again, they leave another voicemail. And then the next day they yeah. call you again. After a few days, you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so guilty that I haven't called this person back yet. Yeah, yeah. The more persistent they are in calling you, you're going to call them back. Yeah. And there's, it, it's, it's interesting that God says that actually matters in this equation. And because when God is faithful, it almost seems like, well, why does it matter? But he says mm-hmm. it does. Well, there's something about it that changes you. Because if, if God's infinitely good, my persistence isn't affecting his goodness. He's not changing from like good to more than good to more than more than good. But because, here the judge is. So, so the judge is actually yeah, changing his answer. His answer. But I would, I would say in that same parable, the judge doesn't change his disposition. Now that judge doesn't have the same disposition yeah. as God, obviously. It says that he doesn't fear yeah. God. But like what I'm trying to say there is sometimes... It's actually in our consistency, our relentless prayer, that we are beginning to change, that I'm starting to trust more, surrender more, be less self-reliant. I, there's all these things happening in me that are, that are like actually bringing me back to the Lord constantly. And he, and he knows that in that persistence, I'm going to be conformed more and more to be like him. And if he would have given me the answer right away or been like, hey, just ask me once and then it's all over, I would have never been able to actually steward the answer to that prayer later. Like, like because that's his perspective. Like, he, yep. he's not just, he's not a vending machine. It's not like input, output. It's, yep. it's like, well, it's the Cain and Abel thing. It's like, where's your heart at when you give me this gift? Where's your heart at? Yep. Like, how can I conform you more to be like me? How can I give you something that won't crush you, but that you can carry out? Like, He's seeing all of that at the same time. And of course we can't see that. So when I ask for five, 10, 20 years, sometimes we're so transfixed on the fact I haven't gotten that result. I've missed the 20 years of growth I've had. It's like, that might've been the fruit. But Mm -hmm. when I'm so transfixed on, you didn't answer this prayer. You didn't answer this prayer. You didn't answer this prayer. And I stop asking. I've forgotten about all the other things he is doing. And what he is doing will lead unto like his, his works, right? Now, there is mystery in that. 
but it's not so mysterious that we can't get our like like mind around it a little bit. Like I, I think about it with kids all the time. Like I, I've watched you guys as parents in very good ways. When your kids ask for something, like actually teach them that actually right now is not the appropriate time for that. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean that I don't want you to have it. Right now mm-hmm. is not the appropriate time. Mm-hmm. And then they'll come back and ask again. And once again, it's a correction of like, hey, actually it's still not yet the appropriate time, right? And then there comes a time and yeah, in our human reality, maybe it's later that day yeah. or whatever, but it could be their a hundredth time asking. Yeah. And that time, because of the disposition of where they're at in their life and in that moment, you bring it forward to them. Not because you were withholding to be like, you were actually doing it so they could receive it well, so they could be in a place so that you could be present to them in a new way. Of course, like God's the same. I think there's a lot of prayers I've prayed that I wasn't willing to walk in the consequences of those prayers. And the, hmm. it's, it's good that hmm. it required persistence because if that prayer was answered in that moment, I wasn't, I, I wasn't able to, willing to, wanting to, or called to walk in that, you know, like mm. I think of some big ones, right? Like, like sometimes in a moment of prayer, we get this radical spirit of desire mm. that says, I want this Lord. And the Lord is almost waiting. Like, are you willing to walk in the consequence of, 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 of me answering that? Um, yeah. I, I heard once that the reason the Lord hasn't, uh, answered the prayer of to end abortion in America is because Christians aren't ready to walk in the consequences of that. Like, mm-hmm. is the Christian church ready to adopt the number of children that um, yeah. it would require us to adopt? And yeah. Yeah. That there's this almost like we can cry without cry out to God without realizing, okay, there's, there's, and the persistence of that prayer, it does, as you're saying, it changes our heart to get ready to walk in it yeah, once that's it's right. given. That's right. Um, which is rich. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a both and too, right? So, mm-hmm. so yes, that's true that it changes you. Yeah. Don't, don't miss that. Yeah, right. Don't miss that. And yes, it's true that, that, that maybe God's waiting for us to, uh, waiting for us to be ready to steward whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that that persistence is, is indicative of this disposition. Mm-hmm. But I think it's also true that like, this is fundamentally a mystery. Like yeah. what, we're t- what we're trying to wrap our head around right now is living relationship with an infinite being. <laughs> yes. So uh, yeah, there, sure. there's, there's not sure. a whole lot of this that we can, that we can bundle up and package and, mm-hmm. and completely explain. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's very evident from scripture that, that at least as we interpret God's will, that he shifts it when we intercede. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that something changes when we pray. Yeah. And to try to, to try to explain that away, I think becomes difficult. The, the mm-hmm. important thing is to realize that this is not an invitation to build a theology. It's an invitation to do it. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, so if, if we're giving up in our prayer, like that's problematic. Why? Because, because we're, we're ultimately, we're, we're missing the invitation to this, to this yeah. commissioning of the Lord that like, Hey, do this thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, we, we, we like to apply the same, the, the same mode of understanding across the, across the board, whether it's healing, whether it's prophecy, you know, you don't, you don't have to see success every day, but be persistent. Dang it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, because they like, be, or, or else you're forfeiting what you were made for. Yeah. Like you, like you're forfeiting, like that is, that is the greatest part of life. The greatest part of life is relationship with God. It's the greatest part of life. And the degree to which I am like, in relentless prayer and intercession and, and prophetic um, awareness, the, the greater I'm in that reality of what I was made for, Good, you yeah, know? Yeah. And like, and I don't want to forfeit that. I don't want to forfeit that in my own personal intercession. I don't want to forfeit that in mission. Like uh, my life becomes boring fast when it's not in constant relationship with me. Yeah. Well, and that's where I think to summarize what you're both saying is I think we, Yes, persistent, relentless prayer changes us, but it it also to the extent that God can change, right? Uh, it changes Him, right? That and that, that's what the parables are saying. It changes the outcomes, uh, and mm-hmm. that this persistence actually the judge changed his verdict, right? There was a mm-hmm. there was a change of uh, that, and you see that. I mean, God does it in Exodus, um, where it, after the golden calf is built, He's ready to destroy once again, the Israelite people sure. and Moses prays and God's wrath goes down and mm-hmm. he changes what he's going to do. Right. Yeah. And 
that there's power in that. This also, I mean, this comes from Luke 11. It says, mm-hmm. and he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend whom he, uh, who goes out at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine who has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says to reply, he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked. My children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up and give him the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up and give him whatever he needs because of persistence. So this person at midnight, super inconvenient time. The person is asking for bread because his friend has come to his house and he needs mm-hmm. to feed him. And the person says no. And it says that he asked three times that there's this persistence that changes the the person's, the friend's mind to give him what he needs. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, as you said, Aaron, it is this weird mystery because God is unchanging and he has divine foreknowledge of everything. But the, our persistence and our relentlessness is necessary to the equation. Yeah. To the extent that God is asking us to do it. Yeah. Well, the same thing with intercession for the saints. Uh, well, the two be saints that are in purgatory now, right? Like when when we're interceding for the souls in purgatory, that they would become saints, that they would see the full vision of what heaven's going to bring, our prayers change their reality, mm-hmm. like, which is powerful. I think what I would say, even in that persistence though, so that we can hold that, like God, yes, like his, the results of his answer change, he doesn't change in the degree. What, what I'm trying to say in it is that like, it's really beautiful if we can, if we can just try to like, just stay, we can't get all the way there, but like, the person that's being persistent asking three times, what that's telling the person in the bed is, I really want this and yep. I'm ready for it. It's not just whimsical. I'm not yep. just asking for anything. I'm not just knocking every door. I'm at your door yep. and I know you have the bread mm-hmm. and I'm ready to receive it and I'll stay here until you give it to me. It's yep. a change of that person yep. like, or, or a manifestation of who that person is. Yep. It, and that's what shifts the heart of the person in the bed. It's not like, their relationship didn't change. Mm-hmm. It was just like, you're still at the door. You really do want this. You, you need this yeah. right now to be able to take that step. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to submit to that. You're not going to go knock 16 other doors and, and then come back and be like, I didn't really get what I was looking yeah. for. It's like, you said it again and again, because you knew where to find it, right? Yeah. And I will like, reward that. Yeah. Honor that. Like there, there is something really beautiful there. Absolutely. That's the heart of God for us. Yeah. It's it's your you when you stay with me, everything will come from that. 